Dalek mania of Christmas 1964, plans were drawn up for the first Dalek movie outing, which would be based on the first Dalek TV adventure. Released in 1965, Peter Cushing took on the role of Doctor Who and battled the Daleks on the planet Skaro in full and glorious Technicolor. The movie Daleks had been designed to take advantage of the film's colour format, and they didn't disappoint. Our next guest on Time Space Visualizer worked on that movie as one of the Daleks, and it's my pleasure to introduce Brian Hans today to chat about his memories of working on that film. Hi there, Brian, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. In, in the circumstances, yeah. Uh, and I have to um, start by introducing you um, to uh, my own, very own Dalek, uh, Rusty. Uh, this is Brian, Brian Rusty. Um, something you remember very well, I'm sure. I do indeed, yes, yes. Um, they were, as I recall, a bit uncomfortable to sit in, but, and you had to be sort of lowered in, and then they put the top on. <laughs> and, well, I... I've not managed to be lowered into this one just yet, but there's a full seat and everything inside. But I think it's, I think it's something like along the lines you would have had when you were uh, in the movie. Yeah, I'm sure he looks just the job. Exactly. How, did the, um, how did the role in the film come about for you, Brian? <laughs> well, that is um, ironic in a way. I was sitting at home. I was an out-of-work actor living in London. And the phone went one night, and this uh, chap said, uh, you know, I've been looking through Spotlight and uh, thought you might be good for a, a little job I have. And I said, oh, fine, yes, what is it? And he said, well, it, it's to be a Dalek. Uh, and I thought, hang him on, <laughs> a Dalek in Spotlight. But apparently, of course, they list your dimensions and you had to be under five foot eight to fit in the Daleks. And I indeed am five foot seven. So he thought I, I, they needed someone urgently. I think one of the guys, they'd already started filming and one of the guys was ill or had to leave. So they needed a replacement. And uh, I, I said, well, fine, because the, the money was really quite good for those days. I think I got about uh, 10 or 12 pounds a day, which um, in, in that period was good. So I went along, I thought, oh, well, a couple of days. And in the end, I was there for 10 days and uh, I was very happy. It was a, a really fun job because the other guys on the film were, were really uh, nice lads. And of course, as you say, Peter Cushing was there, he was charming. And Roy Castle, who played the young. Hero, he was great fun and very entertaining to work with, and altogether had a very good time. Yes, I would imagine it was an, uh, a lovely pleasure to work with Peter Cushing, um, a true gentleman. Yes. Uh, absolutely, yes, a very very nice man, and uh, well, and Roy Castle was great fun, and the girls were good, and it it, <laughs> it was a, an interesting experience because I think they were. Uh, at that point, the Daleks themselves were built by the prop department and they were doing their best, um, but they were a bit makeshift. I think our, um, I don't know about your friend there, but uh, the weapon we had to use was actually a converted fire extinguisher. You pulled the trigger and the steam came out of the front of the fire extinguisher. And of course, the um, the plant, the uh, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, the the weapon is actually was a uh, a, a dish of washer extractor, uh, a plunger for for freeing up drains, and of course you had the the head which you could really, uh, had to um, shift around and uh, operate the uh, the eye on the end of the stalk there and uh, at the same time trundle it round with your feet sitting inside and using your feet to, to maneuver the Dalek which um, was at times quite complicated but it seemed to work and uh, 
w- was it quite a heavy um, prop to be moving around? Um, yes, it was. But I mean, they were on sort of quite um, substantial casters, and it wasn't too difficult to move it around. But uh, and uh, often on the shot, they would position you, and then you just sit there and and use your your weapon to, when required. Uh, and of course, we actually did speak the dialogue although it was never um it wasn't recorded uh, it was overdubbed later on by the voice of the dalek uh, the guy his name i can't remember actually but uh, he, he did all the voices so you would have you would have had to have learned the script along with the other actors oh, yes yes so you could come in on cue when required to to do the uh, maneuvers and of course the i don't know the our big scene was at the very end when, when the whole uh, control center, Dalek, uh, the, of the spaceship exploded around us. And I remember we were slightly alarmed. I think it was before health and safety was, became such a huge consideration. As we were positioned in our Daleks around the, uh, the control center. And I think it was Roy Hudd's stand, a stand-in for Roy Hudd was brought in, and they they'd wired up all the the panel and the and the boxes with the tiny explosion, and they uh, and people said, "Oh well, you stay there because you're all right in the in the Daleks," and everybody else was cleared off the set, and on cue the whole thing exploded around us, which was. Slightly alarming at the time, but it was okay. We all survived. So. And it's quite an epic explosion and quite an epic um, yeah. kind of battle sequence at the end. Yeah. Uh, and you're quite right. Health and, health and safety wasn't first and foremost in the movie industry back in the 60s. Not then, no. Um, yeah, I think because the, is it the cars, the sails, the, uh, uh, they, they were all cleared off the set. But they thought, well, you're all right, so you can stay where you are. Which was quite fun, really. They, they, thought, they thought you were safe, but... Um... Yes, in our Daleks, yeah. Which I suppose you were, actually. But they were fairly substantial. Um, what, um, what other challenges did you have during filming? Was it, was it quite a smooth run, or, or were, there, were, were there some hiccups at any point? Um, I can't really remember anything um, too difficult. We... Uh, no, I mean the, the the whole thing moved fairly fast, and for, for a film set, I mean they they weren't they didn't sit around, and uh, we got on with it, and there weren't any real problems I, I, that I can recall anyway. No. Mm. And and how aware of, of you had had you been of actually Doctor Who on the TV at that point? Were you, were you aware well, of the sort of premise of it? Yes, I mean I'd seen um, the, the TV. Uh, adaptations uh, and uh, versions of myself and I knew I knew who the Daleks were and, uh, it was uh, it was just great fun to be involved in the actual film I remember the the other we all became quite um, good friends the Dalek operators and we used to sit around between shots playing uh, cards <laughs> on team and I've, I've somehow got a picture of you all sat with just half a Dalek base all yes. around the table. You're all sat in your Dalek bases <laughs> playing cards. I've just got a vision there. <laughs> well, um, you know, you actually had to come out of it. You couldn't stay in half of it, as it were. It, it, uh, they, they released you. We had to be put in them and then closed in. And they put the head on and then it, it, which kind of swiveled on its own axis. Uh, and then, then yes. you were there for the duration in fact for as long as it took. You've got to have um, you've got to have quite a bit of um, agility because you've got the eye stalk, the the two handles here. You've got to move the Dalek around. As you said, you've got to be quite talented in there. Oh. Were, you, were you able to use the um, Were you able to use the, the props during rehearsal in any way? Um, well, yes. I mean they they uh, we run through the shot before it but and uh, we would be inside the Dalek and then um, using the 
the, the operating the arm for the the uh, fire extinguisher and the kitchen plunger and, and uh, make do whatever was we were directed to do um, and swivel the head so you're uh, looking at the, the right person when they're talking to you as it were and communicating. Um, it's certainly a film that yeah. um, I'm, I mean for us the film seeing the Daleks in colour for the first time um, would have been quite a shock for for the audiences back in the in the 60s um, yeah. and of course you know, you, you would be quite famous for playing a Dalek in, in, in many respects back then with Dalek mania as it was. Uh, yes and no. I mean, the, it is, it, it does, it is ironic really that one of the, that for me, I, I suppose I, it was fun to be cast. Uh, I was, the, the money came in handy because I was out of work at the time. And then certainly when the film came out, it was, it was great fun. And, to actually see your name up on on the credits at the end, which is still there, of course. And but I don't think any of us ever dreamt that forty or fifty years later you would still be there. And in fact, that um, of any of the work that I've done, it it has turned out to be possibly the, the most um, fame I've ever achieved. To be honest. And to come back and find then later on that, that uh, people are still so interested is, is quite extraordinary. Oh yes, there's quite there's still quite some interest in there. Did you get an invite to the premiere just out of interest? Uh, yes, yes, we did. They, sh they did a showing for the the cast and crew, and we were there. But, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That, I don't think there was a, an official sort of premiere. Leicester Square type premiere for that film at the time because I don't think anybody really appreciated what, what an effect it would have and how mm. successful it would be. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, the entire success of that film then drove the, the second film. Um, so, you know, I don't think, I, I think you're right, I don't think they planned the second one necessarily. So, um, no, no. Uh, and it had such impact, just as I said, because Dalek Mania in, in, the, in the UK at that time was just at its height. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was certainly uh, an, an experience to be involved with it, which was great fun. Um, it's been lovely reminiscing about um, the movie. Yeah. I, can't, I can't let you go though without just mentioning um, a, a, small, a small but very, very funny scene that you, um, that you got a chance to film in Peter Kay's car share. Yes, yes. Um, where you play Ken, the next door neighbour. Yes, the dogging incident. <laughs> yeah. The whole build up through the episode is, is just so well crafted and yeah. it's talked about and then you, you get to see Ken at the end and there's, the playoff at the end is, is, is mm -hmm. just simply so well done. Mm -hmm. I mean, Peter Kay, such a funny man. Indeed, yes. Yeah. yeah, and again, a privilege to work with him and uh, it was, well, yeah, it was a very enjoyable thing to have worked on, and I, it's nice to see it again. <laughs> I know, uh, I'm glad people enjoyed it, yeah. Well, yeah, a, a great episode. Um, no, 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 no means about that, a great episode. Um, been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Brian. Thanks very much for giving up some time for us today to share your, yes. your sort of reminiscences uh, on, the, um, on the Dalek movie. Um, keep safe, stay well, and thanks very much. And the same to you. Thanks. Lovely to talk to you. Cheers. Thank you.